Philippians chapter 4. Uh, I'm going to read one verse this morning. We're going to look at verse 8. The Bible says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Let us pray. Lord, thank You morning for all that has taken place. Lord, we pray for those of our church who are not. Lord, some of them are sick, some of them are recovering, some of them, Lord, are traveling today, but some of them are just not here. So Lord, we pray for all of them, and we pray that You minister to all of them. Lord, we pray that once again, very soon, that we are all back in the whole church. And Lord, we pray today that the Lord, Lord, what You have sent here, what who have You sent here today, Lord, we understand that it's not by any accident that, Lord, You have sent here today those who stand in need. Lord, we need to be directed in something. We need to be touched in something. Lord, everybody may be different this morning, but Lord, we believe in the reason for being here. Lord, we pray that You direct us in that way today. We pray today, Lord, that Your Word, or my words, be Your words. Lord, that, um, Lord, we pray that what I preach points to Your glory and not mine. We pray today that You are seen. And Lord, we pray today that this brings You the most glory it can. In Your precious name, Amen. Have you ever heard the statement, what's the world coming to? Have you ever heard that? You might have said it. I know that when we see something that we just can't believe or, or something that just kind of uh, shocks us, we say, what is the world <coughs> coming to? And I can tell you, just looking back, I've been watching a, uh, a movie that's a, or a documentary type thing, and this um, talks about time over over millions and billions of years. Of course, we don't believe that. We believe in the Bible that teaches us that there's about 4,500 years that we can know about, and that's what we we think too. Uh, we don't try to put down some number, but it's not billions and billions. But when you think and you hear them say billions and billions. You think, man, if you just stop, you think what's happened over the last hundred years. Or if you think about what has happened over the last 50 years. If you'll just stop today and think about what's happened over the last 20 years. It's amazing how things have changed. It's amazing how things continually change. And I'll tell you, man couldn't be here for me. Years. We have had done so much damage in just the years that we have uh, been accounted for here. We just couldn't be turned loose for that long. But listen to this. When we look at the way that we live today, the things that we can just turn on the TV or, or, or just go out in, in, in our, even in our own town, the things that are acceptable today, and we can go back and look just... <coughs> let's go back just to your granny. Let's go back 10, 15, 20 years today. And you know she wouldn't allow... You can find things today that is allowed and that is acceptable or overlooked that just 20 <coughs> years ago wouldn't be tolerated. Amen? Can I get an amen? amen? That's so true. That statement I just made is so true. So you say, what's the world coming to? Well, the Bible tells me that it's coming to an end. And the reason it's coming to an end is because of what the world's coming to. Do you understand? Because of what we now allow. 
we take and look, and if the next 20 changes like this 20, where will we be then? What will be acceptable then? What would be tolerated 20 years from today? I mean, I see things that I just know that ain't right. I see things today, still today, that are acceptable that makes my stomach not feel right. You ever get that? Yeah. Because God's inside of me. Because Jesus Christ dwells in me. And Jesus Christ, the weapon me, always points back to where it should be. What should be. What shouldn't be allowed. And as long as Jesus Christ is dwelling inside of us, and whosoever He dwells inside of, the world will never be right. And it's just getting worse and worse and worse. Because I serve the same God that Abraham served. I serve today the same risen Savior that Paul served. Amen. And you do too. We serve a Jesus that doesn't change. We serve a Jesus that doesn't tolerate. We serve a Jesus Christ that never has made deals and never will make deals. Jesus doesn't approach us and say, well, if you'll do this for me, I'll let you slide on that. That is not how our Jesus operates. Amen. So I imagine that my Jesus, that your Jesus, is sitting today saying, what is this world coming to? And it's why Jesus has had to step up and tell us. It's why Jesus had to, had to leave heaven in the first place. Because of what this world is coming to. He had to take on human form. He had to live as an example. He had to go to the cross of Calvary because of what's going on in this place. He had to give His life on the cross of Calvary to be laid in a tomb. The only begotten Son of God because of what is going on this place. He didn't want to do that for us. He arose. Amen. He arose. He arose to show us, to show those who will let Christ dwell in them that no matter what goes on in the world, He's not going to leave us to the world. He, didn't, he, he showed us in the, in the victory over death that He's not going to leave us to the physical. He's not going to leave us to the material. He's not going to leave us to the existence of this place. He is coming back. That's right. Jesus told us that He goes to prepare a place. If it wasn't so, He would have told us. He's coming back. The reason Jesus is coming back is He can't leave us because of what the world is coming to. It's horrible. Now we like to concentrate on the good. We like to be happy. 